and welcome back to the Learn to Code podcast. Today is going to be a very special episode. Um, I've been working on learning. Um, I got uh, this past weekend, I got a free subscription for two days to the famous website called Pluralsight. Um, I haven't paid um, another month. So I just basically uh, use the time to learn something new. If you are watching this on YouTube, you can clearly see that we are uh, working on a console today and on a Linux terminal, may I say. So uh, what course did I watch on, on, on the last couple of days? Uh, well, I was basically learning about Bash. Um, and for those who don't know, um, Bash is an interpreter for scripts. So I can basically uh, write down uh, Linux command line um, uh, instructions on a text file and the bash will actually execute them. So it may sound very boring and it may be uh, for some people. For me, it's very uh, exciting in the sense that um, running a scripts is very... Um, it's one of my favorite things to do with a computer because in one hand, you don't really need too much um, knowledge about programming. Uh, however, and uh, just to mention, uh, we do have a scripting on Windows uh, for, a long for a long, long time, yet I don't remember Windows batch files having uh, the option to to do loops and, um, and 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 if statements, if statements. So in Bash, we do have uh, I do have access to loops, especially do while and while do loops, the classical programming loops, and um, obviously um, we do have uh, if then else's. So uh, on my free weekend on Pluralsight, I use the time to learn about Bash and the command line terminal, watching a couple of courses. And I do have to say that I still do have a lot to learn. Uh, but let me show you why I, what I just uh, uh, get my hands into. So if you're watching this on YouTube, you can actually see the... Uh, my screen right now is basically a black screen with my... Uh, a connection to my uh, Ubuntu server. So I'm going to be working on an, on an Ubuntu server today. So right now, uh, I just log in into my uh, server using a terminal. And I do have uh, some, uh, I just uh, listed the files and directories here and nothing out of the ordinary. I only have uh, a bean folder. Uh, that's the place where I am uh, saving my scripts. Uh, I do have a, an, a script folder uh, for some other tests. Uh, Borrame folder, which I can actually delete right now because that was just um, uh, a test. So there we go. Um, and I do have an, a known a no hop.out file, which is basically um, um, the output file, that I'm, the log file that I'm using for my testing. And um, uh, nothing out of the ordinary here. Um, so um, I've been using um, Bash um, and another program called FFMP. M P A A G, which is basically a command line uh, program that allows me to um, to basically um, uh, well, it's basically a very fast video and audio converter that can also grab from a live audio and video source. It can also convert between arbitrary sample rates and resize video on the fly with a high quality polyphase filter. Well, that's the, that's the official description right there. 
So I've been using this program on my server uh, for a very um, useful thing here. Let me show you. Um, if you are watching this on YouTube, I am actually showing you my share um, recording folder. Here, um, I use this um, share folder on my Ubuntu server to store um, uh, recordings of video games here, of my gaming sessions, and some other stuff like uh, videos that I post on YouTube. And this very same, um, uh, how do you call it? This very same podcast. So, uh, the thing is that these uh, videos are recorded on very high quality um, using a, a streaming computer. So, the files are gigantic, uh, less to say. So, we are talking about um, uh, files measuring 25.5 gigabytes each. And I do have a lot of them. So... Uh, 25 gigabyte files are way too big even though i do have a six terabyte hard drive on the server um i'm not uh, a fan of uh, storing a uh, raw uh, raw file formats like um uh, like big pictures without compression so especially if i'm planning to upload those files into youtube so i don't really uh, have any need to uh, storing uh, large files, especially video. And, uh, most of those files are not going to be used anyway, uh, because it's basically just raw, uh, raw video from my gaming sessions. Uh, I may use those videos as a background for YouTube in the future, or something like that, maybe. So. What I'm doing here is that I am using this command line um, program on Linux uh, to allow myself to compress the video files into a new folder. And after that's done, I'm going to be deleting the original files, um, assuming that I'm going to need the space or uh, that I am um, uh, that if I'm going to keep all those files uh, without using them really uh, maybe I just want to to ensure myself that I do have enough space in the future considering that the compression process is very uh, it's taking weight uh, it's taking a lot of time to do uh, because on my Ubuntu server I am using um, a 2015 uh, core E i3 uh, processor and it's not really that fast uh, doing the stuff so since the process of compressing video is very uh, is taking some time so i decided to create some uh, um, some scripts to automate the to to make the process a little bit automatic even when i am not doing uh, something on the, on the server at the time so what did I do? Well, um, getting back to the uh, to the Ubuntu server terminal, I do have a bin folder, and let me let me show you here on YouTube what the contents of the bin folder are. So I do have a couple of files here inside the bin folder. The first one is called encode.sh. And the other one is encode folder.sh. So let's use uh, the nano text editor here to, to show you the first one, encode.sh. And if you can see on the, on the video stream, uh, on the video, you can actually see that the script is very uh, small. I do have the, obli the, the mandatory um, shebang command uh, that's basically defining where uh, this script is going to be interpreted uh, interpreted so we do have the 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 hash bank uh, dash bin dash bash um, uh, line on, on on the head and this is the proper header for a bash script and right after that, uh, we have a, a, com a comment uh, describing the, the first line. And after that, I do have a couple of variables in Spanish. Um, 
uh, we may read them as input and output. Um, I am assigning to those variables the the first parameter and the second parameter when I call, when I decide to call this um, uh, this script. So I'm basically running this script and asking for a couple of parameters at the time of, of executing the script. So right after that, I'm using ffmpeg mp uh, this command to basically take the input and execute the compression uh, command here. All of this, I, I found out about this command on on the internet. I, I believe it was on Stack Exchange, maybe. So, no, I believe it, I found this command on GitHub. So this is going to basically convert the video um, that I'm defining on the input variable and compress it using the, the options recommended for YouTube. Right after that, uh, I'm going to be saving the file uh, as declared and defined on the output variable. So basically, I am just uh, requiring the name of the input file and the name of the output file, and it's going to just run an a specific um, uh, ffmpeg command. So nothing too fancy. I, I didn't write down the last line. I just basically... Um, uh, copy pasted the line and replace the name of the files with my variables here. Nothing fancy. Now let's take a look at the other at the other uh, script here, which is name encode folder dot sh. And here we begin with the same with the shebang and the beam bash uh, line and a couple of variables similar to the previous uh, script. I do have an input folder and, and an output folder. So these variables are working pretty much the same as the previous, um, as the previous script, with the difference that um, I am requiring folder names instead of file names. So the first script is going to actually execute the compression program for the videos for each video and the encode folder script is going to actually um, is going to actually call to the first encode script and execute on every single file inside uh, the input folder. So how do I do this? Well, the first thing I do here is um, execute and a make directory command. So so if the folder is the output folder. If the output folder doesn't exist, I am creating it right here. If the output folder already exists, well, um, it doesn't create it again, obviously. So I'm using the dash p option uh, just in case that uh, I am using a, a long uh, suit folder, a suit folder structure here. So that's why the p command is going to be making is going to create the parent folders required uh, for my for my entire path to be building, and right after that command, I do have a for loop here, and this is where things become a, a little bit um, more complex, may I say? So the definition for a for loop on Bash is basically the the keyword for followed by a space and the and the name of the variable that is going to be storing the the value for the for in this case um, it's going to the variable is called uh, input file and then we we get another space and the keyword n then another space and obviously we need to define, well, this input file, where is it coming from? And here I am using the actual content of the input folder, followed by an asterisk. And the variable uh, input folder is surrounded by double quotes. 
And why is that? Well, if the name of the folder contains any, um, if contains any spaces, then uh, uh, at the time that the input folder variable finds uh, the first space, it's going to truncate the string there and end it. So I'm going to, if my folder contains any spaces, it, the program is going to fail because it's not going to, to find out uh, the actual folder. So that's what I'm using double quotes, surrounding the variable. After I surrounded the variable, uh, the input folder string is going to end with a with a dash with a with a diagonal dash. So um, after that, I'm using the asterisk or the star character to define that I want all the files inside the input folder as member and and the for loop is going to basically um, loop through every single file found on that uh, on that input folder then we have a semicolon followed by space and the do keyword and that's just the first line of the of the do of the for loop so after that um, comes the content of the actual loop so i use the um, i create a new variable called um, uh, output file and I assigned it the um, a, a key value. Uh, I, uh, I assigned it the variable um, input file. However, you can actually see here on my on the video, you can see that um, the variable input uh, output file um, is actually equals to dollar sign open curly brackets uh, the name of the variable, which is input file. And it's followed by a couple of hashtag signs. So of, uh, after that, it's followed by a star and a diagonal dash. And I end up the line with uh, cur closing curly braces. So I found out on a stack exchange that with that, with that uh, definition of the, of the variable, I can basically get the name of the file without the entire uh, working directory of the file. So I, I am just getting the actual name of the file alongside with its, um, with its, uh, its extension. So um, I'm getting uh, on the output file just the name. So uh, in which folder am I going to be saving this file? Well, next, I am assigning to the output file, um, I'm changing the, uh, the string containing um, on, the, on the variable to basically say, well, um, you are going to be replacing this with the name of the output folder followed by a diagonal and then uh, the current value of the output file, which is basically um, the 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 name of the of the output file that I'm working on right now, and with this, um, I am removing also during the call. I am removing the actual um, extension of the file uh, because I don't want the actual extension anymore and I am adding the mp4 extension instead. So I am basically um, working with a, uh, with a for loop, not just to read um, every single file on the, on the folder, but to also create a new variable which is going to be the output file. Now, since I do have both the input file, the input folder, uh, I mean, and the output uh, and the output file in the end, now I can call in my encode.sh uh, script. So I'm basically uh, the last line for the for loop is going to be encode.sh followed by a space. Then I open with double quotes. And I basically write down the dollar sign and the input file. 
and then I close with double quotes followed by another space and I enter the second parameter which is um, which is uh, the output file surrounded by um, double quotes again so what I'm doing here is basically building the output file string and using that as the actual output file for for the encode sh uh, script so so uh, at that point i give the control to my encode.sh um, uh, script and the script is going to basically call in um, the ffmpeg um, command line uh, program and it's going to compress um, a file at the time so the first problem I face after this, um, well, after after that line, I just close with the keyword done, and that's basically it. It's a very simple script, even though it takes me a, a lot of time to actually explain it on the podcast, but never mind that. So, right now, let's type the, um, the top command, and if you're watching this on YouTube, you can actually see that the first three uh, processes on my screen are basically uh, FFMPEG processes. So every single of them represent a single folder being being processed at, the, at this time. So how do I do this? Um, I found out um, that after I executed my process, uh, whenever I close the window, because I'm using putty here for, for connecting to my remote, um, uh, Ubuntu server. So every single time I close the window for uh, or I or I end my session on the terminal, um, all the scripts stop and and they just don't work anymore. So I need to actually add them uh, to work in the background um, and to allow myself to basically do some other, uh, something else. Um, so. I should either keep the window open and the computer on all the time until uh, the end of the process, or I may just add them to the background. And we're going to see how to do that right now. So that's the output of the top command. Let's clear the screen. And as you can see here, um, I can actually use encode no matter in, what, in which folder I am located on. I don't need to be on my home bean folder. So let's move on to, to the folder where all the media is in. And it's on CD space media, uh, storage, then uh, recordings. I, no, then Samba, because I'm using Samba to share the folder. Then my username then uh, recording recordings in plural and then let me see oh where is it there we go and then here i can see all the all the folders that are contained on, on the recordings folder um, so all of these are video games so i'm going to be using um I don't remember. Let me see if I can find. Um, I believe Valkyria Chronicles 4 folder contains some files. So let's list them. Okay. So as you can see, uh, I do have several files inside the Valkyria Chronicles 4 uh, folder. Some of them are surrounded by single quotes. And that's because the name of the actual file contains spaces when when the name of the files contain spaces i i do need to uh to surround the name of the file in a single quote so the space doesn't actually break the uh, the string and is considered as part of the string so I did find out uh, that I got some bugs uh, concerning the strings because I wasn't using um, uh, double quotes uh, inside my scripts, but never mind that at the moment. So let's assume that I want to compress these files into, into let's see how much space do they use actually. Uh, 
let me see as this usage uh, dash summarize for humans and let's put the Valkyria Chronicles so the folder itself is measured in 50 gigabytes total and we can see that we do have a lot of files with different sizes um, let me see if I can sort them out uh, by size and we can see that I do have a 18 gigabytes file is one of the biggest uh, files there is the biggest file there and I do have a couple of 3 gigabytes, 4 gigabytes, 6 gigabytes files so these videos are not very long and they do use uh, a lot of space on my hard drive so let me see if I can find out which of this is the, the lesser um, I believe there is an 11 megabyte uh, file right here so let's copy the name there we go and there we go okay so the sample file I found out is actually one of the the files that is used in a space so I need to escape the space character like this and there we go I can actually list it so I'm going to be using uh, this file just to show uh, how the encode uh, actually works so to call out for my let's enter the the Valkyria Chronicles 4 folder anyway and there we go so in order for me to actually use this script the only thing I need to do is write encode dot sh space and the input folder or may I say the the input file I don't need the actual folder name here there we go so if you are watching this on video uh, I need to escape the space here um, because if I do I do try to do this and then um, paste the name of the file I'm going to call it output there we go I'm going to call it output and it's going to be saved on the same folder if I try to do this without escaping the space character um, the first section of the of the file name is going to be considered the first file so basically this is going to be considered the first file and this is going to be considered the output file and the last one is going to be not I, I believe it's actually output is going to be the 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 the, um, the output file normally and this is going to be considered the input file so let's see and there we go so it's telling me that the beginning of the name file is not uh, a file of the directory that's because after the after um, the space um, since it's not escaped the character is not escaped this the escape character I need to escape it like this adding the inverse dash or surrounding everything on single quotes or double quotes I believe so I going to escape the the space character like this and if I press the tab key it's going to there we go it's going to try out to finish the string okay let's paste it again uh oh there we go so this is the name of the file so let's type down encode sh and I am escaping the space now and it's going to be I need to add the entire uh, the absolute um, uh, output file including the entire path so I'm going to be doing that again I'm going to copy the path from right here there we go and output.mp4 there we go so if I do this the program is going to begin uh, working its magic and it's going to compress the file 
Uh, as I, we just have to wait for a little uh, for a little while because the file is not really that big. It's it's only 11 megabytes. Um, if we change into the file system here, and let me look for Valkyria Chronicles 4. There we go. So we can see here. Let me uh, change the size. There we go. We do have a, a notebook uh, file right here. And that's and the last file here is the one that is being working on. So when the file is done, we are going to see here uh, the the output and let's see how much um, we can actually see that the size of this file is changing. It's around three three dot seventy five megabytes now, four megabytes now, and it's uh, and it's continuing. So as the program as FFMPEG is working, uh, we can actually see uh, all the data that is being compressed at this time. So. Uh, it's going to take some time, uh, not not too much, I, may, I guess. So let's see. Let's see. I think I just chose the. No. Uh, I chose uh, an eleven. Me I I think it's the first one. This one here. This one here is the one I chose. Uh, is around eleven megabytes of duration. Uh, it's. 34 seconds You're listening to the music that's the intro of the game So that's basically the file and let's see Okay It's around 8 megabytes right now. I wonder if it, if it already finishes now is this continue working? I wonder if I um, choose uh, the wrong file because uh, it's it's going very big right now. Okay, let's see. Let's copy the name of the file here. It can be that big anyway. It's already um, getting at the same size, so it's very bad for demonstration purposes. Mm hmm. I don't think I choose the right file anyway. So let's cancel the process here. And see the command again. I wonder, it finishes with 184050. Okay, let's see. Oh, it's the same file actually. Uh, and the output file is already longer. It's, uh, it's already bigger in size. Uh, um, So-called compression. Well, never mind that. Let's try again, I guess. Mm, let's see. Let's change this. Let's paste it. There we go. and the actual process is going on so the problem i have with this is the fact that um, as long as uh, the program is working i am unable to use this very same session for something else uh, until it finishes and i cannot process more than a single file at the time so um, what i find out is that i can actually uh, work a single file in the background um, and send the, the entire script in the background so what i do is basically uh, let's uh, i just stop the process there let's stop it here so what i do is basically calling the encode folder the encode folder uh, script and sending it to the background so to do that i basically uh, write a new command called uh, no edge up so no no edge up and then i write down my command or my script whatever i want to do so i'm going to call encode folder.sh space and i'm going to send the input folder which is going to be 
the Valkyria Chronicles folder. Uh, there we go. Uh, followed by another space. And the output folder is going is not going to be the same as the input folder. I'm keeping the folder separated so I already know which one is which. So I don't I'm not mixing up um, the compressed version um, upon the same folder because that may uh, get me into trouble with the same names in the case that um, since I'm not changing the name of the actual files too much. Um, in the case that the input file is the has the same name as the output file, I don't have to rename anything. So I keep in folder separated. Uh, so I'm basically saving it on the same folder structure, but the the previous fo the parent folder for Valkyria Chronicles 4 folder is called uh, the compressed recordings folder. So that's basically the difference. So I am, uh, oh wait, Valkyria Chronicles 4, and I am adding, there we go. So I am calling up for the no edge up command followed by the encode folder.sh script. I'm sending a couple of strings containing the, uh, the name of the input folder and the name of the output folder. And after that, I may like to keep record of the lock of the output of the program. I'm going to add an space and a greater than uh, character followed by another space and the name of the lock file. So to keep things simple, I'm going to basically save the lock file on the original uh, recording folder for the Valkyria Chronicles 4 videos and I'm going to create a log file right there. And another space, and I'm going to add the, I think it's the ampersand character. And all of this is going to be uh, executing in the background. When I click enter, if everything goes right, I'm getting the name of the, the number of the, of the job followed by the PID, I think. Uh, of the process. So if I type down jobs, I am getting a description of all the jobs running. In my case, it's going to be running uh, and, the, and, the, and the entire command here. And that's basically the job that is running. If I uh, type the top command, I can actually see that a new uh, FFMPG uh, command is running in the background. So instead of having just three, I'm having four. And now, if I go to the file system, here I can see a log file, which is actually, um, let's open it with my Visual Studio code. Um, there we go. So here we can see that uh, the same output is being uh, inserted here. So here is the output of the program. And if I open this again, I can actually see that the output is, is actually growing as time is passing. So um, if I want to see the result, let's go to the root folder and then to the uh, compress uh, recording folder. And there I'm going to see it must be somewhere around here. Valkyria Chronicles 4 folder, and I'm getting the first file. I wonder if you can actually see this. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, you can see the size, uh, the size of the file changing as time is passing on. So that's the way I know that it's actually working on the background. So it's building the file, and when when that file is finished, I'm going to have a I'm going to file a, a finished product, I guess, a, a compressed file here. So it's eight gigabytes right now. I mean, it's eight megabytes at the moment. And this file in particular, let's see how much is the original. Valkyria Chronicles 4. And let's show this one here is uh, 
220 megabytes in size. So after this finish, uh, I wonder how much space is going to be saved. I don't think it's going to be saving too much space because if I recall correctly, uh, these files are not recorded in very high quality anyway. So I guess I'm not going to say to most space with these files in particular but just to show you and to finish the podcast by the way uh, i'm going to be showing you uh, some previous work here i do have a uh, some heroes of the storm footage a lot of that by the way it's one of my biggest folders and if i fix this i do have a file which is um, 25.5 uh, gigabytes i think is 24.3 gigabytes it's it's pretty big and let's see if there is a compressed version already from this file uh heroes of the storm there is not a compressed version of that file but let's find the biggest one here um here is one let's look for Oh wait, the original file, um, uh, the compressed version of this file that I'm looking on uh, is 6.47 gigabytes. 6.47 gigabytes, okay. And the original one, the original is 14.9 gigabytes. So it's a very big difference right there. So, um, I can safely say that um, compressing files is going to help me save a lot of the space on this hard drive. And all thanks to, uh, in my case, to bash scripting. And I have to say that uh, last weekend, I didn't know much about scripting. I was basically copy pasting things from the internet to do very specific things, uh, yet, since I took, uh, I took my time to dedicate uh, a couple of days to that. And I can safely say that now I am very interested in scripting in bash using Linux commands. And um, I do recommend uh, a scripting for people that works with files a lot. Uh, a scripting may not be the ideal thing for programming because I don't consider uh, a scripting very useful for large amounts of data in the sense of making calculation is very bad for that uh, but i can definitely uh, recommend a scripting if you are working with files a lot and or if your word demands that you uh, generate your own text files for example i am planning to actually use this uh, to generate xml files um, for one of my projects, I am I am planning how I, am I going to do um, uh, an invoice system which needs to generate XML files. So the uh, scripting may be a very important thing, uh, part of that because I am required to to create set uh, compressed set files with XML files inside. So I may use scripting just for that and. Uh, um, and obviously I can call um, scripts from inside other programs like uh, my programs on Java. I have read uh, a little bit about it so I can combine a scripting uh, in bash with Java programs maybe and obviously Java can, can, can connect to databases. So I may get the data from my database from my databases and compile the information, create the XML files, use a scripting to create the zip files, or maybe create the, the zip files directly inside Java. I haven't decided yet. And as you can see, I can just, uh, I may actually just close this terminal here. Let's, uh, let's exit the terminal. And let's open it again. Let's see. Let's open the terminal again. Okay. Okay. 
So, I open the terminal again. And the thing is that I no longer, I, I do have a question here. I no longer able to see all the jobs. Uh, I assume because since the original session is closed, now those jobs are not, uh, do not belong to this session anymore. I don't know how it works. Uh, I can still see with the top command that the FFMPG command is actually working on. I do have four commands running at the moment. So that means that I do have four folders working right now. And the CPU usage is very low uh, for each of them. Yet I am more concerned by the hard disk drive usage. Uh, because it's writing and reading from the same um, on the same hard drive, um, so I don't uh, basically uh, uh, compress more than four videos at a time, and maybe that may be too much. Um, I'm not sure anyway. Um, uh, I think it's very useful to do a scripting, uh, especially with commands that do a lot of things that take that may take time. Uh, for example, you may uh, use the no edge up command to to create a tar files uh, with if you want to move your files in in large chunks in uh, to a NAS, for example, it may be very useful to create a, a really big tar file with the contents of all your files inside and. That may be even faster to transmit using a, net a network device um, rather than transmitting every single file one at a time. So in my experience, uh, especially moving large amounts of files, for example, two terabytes, um, that may be a very large time to transmit if you are not compressing them. Uh, so what I do is basically take my time and compress everything in a very large tar file and then move that tar file uh, via network. And that may be even faster than trying to do a, a file at a time, especially for Windows system. Uh, but anyway, I've been having fun with, uh, with, uh, with the courses. Um, I learned a lot and I see that bash uh, scripts are very useful. I do really recommend them. And even if you are not programming um, uh, for, for Linux, or even if you don't use a Linux system at all, I do recommend you to take a look because, uh, uh, especially if you have something that may take a lot of time, for example, like this, uh, like compressing video, uh, I do actually recommend you to uh, to take a look at the scripting and to FF, uh, FFMPEG. Uh, those are very useful tools. And I think it's actually um, uh, worth it in the end. Uh, let's see, for example, let's see one of my Finnish uh, folders, American Truck Simulator. Um, the compressed versions measures around two gigabytes. And the original, let me see, let me see. The American Truck Simulator original folder measures in 7.34 gigabytes. Obviously, as long as the, uh, as more files are compressed, and, and as long as the folder is bigger, you're going to see bigger savings. So um, it's a very useful tool. And that's, all, and that's all I wanted to talk about today. So uh, I guess that's the end of the podcast. So thank you for listening. You are being here uh, from the beginning. And I hope uh, that you enjoy your time here on the podcast. Uh, let me know on the comments on the of the video if you wish to see something in specific or what do you think about the podcast or, and how do I do things here I try to uh, be clear and to don't spend too much time here talking but uh, I just cannot help myself I find this very amusing and entertaining so for myself at least so if you enjoy uh, Linux or Bash in general let me know in the comments and have a good night
Goodbye.